But um, well, we spoke about what the next topic is for this uh, for this week, didn't we, guys? And um, I don't think there's any easy way to sort of transition into the, the topic because it's a very a very deep and um, very confronting topic. So we're, today we're talking about sexual abuse and um, addiction. Um, but I'm just going to start off with um, my experience with both of those topics, and then I'll um, yeah, then we'll just sort of have a chat about it. Um, but over my childhood, I was um, sexually abused multiple times, um, and over over that over that child over my uh, my teenage years, I, I struggled with my um, sexuality, and I um, I both slept with men and women growing up, um, and I struggled with um, I struggled with my um, my yeah, I was very confused with with who I was and and what I um, and where I belonged if I was if I was gay or if I wasn't gay and I'm, I'm not, not that I'm saying there's anything wrong with being gay here but um, I was I really struggled with with that because I had been sexually abused by both male and female people um, and it really affected me growing up because um, for many years I would have night terrors and I would have dreams about um, about the stuff and reliving re reliving this stuff and. Um, for many years as well, those people um, were like these big scary monsters in my life and I was always scared to, to, to talk to them or even be around them because um, it, was, it was just a very um, confronting thing. Um, and having to work through that has, has been a very, very hard thing and even with my fiance as well, it's a, it, it still comes into a, we still have a lot of struggles with it because um, there's certain areas in my body that trigger me and I get really freaked out if, if they're, they're touched and um, and I just, I can't, I, like you know, when she wants to hug me or she touches my stomach or something, um, sometimes I just freak out and it's not, nothing against her, I just, um, it's just flashbacks and triggers and, and um, it's, it, you know, because of that, that pain and that abuse I'd gone through, um, I'm not I'm not making excuses or blaming anything on anything, but because of that, I didn't have the tools to deal with what I'd been through. Um, you know, I, be, I did barely any counselling, um, and you know, the counsellors in my books didn't understand what I was going through because they just tried to give me the simple answer, you know, and there's no simple answer for it. And um, that took me down the path of drugs, like methamphetamine and um, and marijuana and codeine, um, and I was addicted to, to multiple those multiple drugs. For, for a couple of years and um, destroyed my family, destroyed my uh, my my connections with with many people, and um, and ended up at rock bottom in a rehab for three years, um, which I've spoken about in other episodes. But uh, I really want to emphasise because I'm very passionate about um, about sexual abuse because every day every day it's a real big struggle to to get through it, um, the feelings, the the emotions that come from it, and and for for a very long time, when I first talked about it two years ago, and first brought it up uh, properly every day, um, because it just felt so disgusting. I, even now, I, I sometimes have to have three to two to three showers a day. I can't wake up without having a shower. I can't do my day without having a shower because I just feel so dirty. And, it, and that's other things that come from this this abuse. And it's it's something that happens to a lot of men and women in this world and it's something that's very very rare to talk about like men, not many people talk about it and because it's such a confronting thing um, it's a very scary thing to talk about but I really I'm really happy we get to talk about it today because we need to make awareness for this in, in men um, to, to share their feelings and to share their experiences if not with their with the counsellor at least with their partner or with someone that they're close to because this stuff kills people. Um, the pain that this brings, it's, it's, a, it's a home destroyer, it's a life destroyer. If I didn't go to rehab, if I didn't get the right counselling, I would still be, and I would either be dead or I'd still be in that world, um, trying, to, trying to hide that pain. But today, I, I, now I've learnt how to face it, you know, head on. And, and you know, sexual abuse, it's a very, um, it's a very scary thing. Um, to go through, um, especially for long periods of time, um, it, um, even in one-off one-off occasions as well. It's um, and it makes you think that something's wrong with you. Um, it makes you think that um, you did something wrong, and and um, when you finally talk about it, you feel guilty that you talked about it or you said something about it because um, you feel like you've you've destroyed someone's life because of what you said. 
Um, but I'm going to open the floor now and just you know, I want to see your guys' point of view on it because um, yeah, it's a very it's a very tough topic to talk about. What do you think, John? Man, um, f this is like the first time for me to hear someone openly speaking about it, and um, from what Jack said. You know, like I can't relate to it, but I, I can imagine like what someone goes through. Like he said, it's, it destroys lives, and um, yeah, it's a very confronting topic. Like seriously, like I, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. You know, um, but I just can't believe there's people out there that would put people through this. That's that's all I, I can say. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah, it's it's, um, it's a very hard topic to talk about. I think Jack is very brave to bring it out and discuss it. Um, I know it must be still traumatic um, to talk about it and you know having the flashbacks and nightmares and all of those things. And I think many people have been abused, you know, reading statistics, um, but it's not often reported. And from some of the books that I've read and the research that I've done, they say that um, you know, being, being a child and being abused or molested, they don't know how to feel about it. And often, um, you know, there was a TED talk I was listening to and there was a lady called Lydia Ward and her abuser was her family friend and her parents trusted that family friend and used to leave her from the age of three to the age of seven. So for four years, she was sexually abused. But what he would do is first they would play with the toys and then after that, he would say, let's go to your secret place. And then he would abuse her. And then after that, he would take her out and buy her some cake. So she was very confused when she talks about in her TED talk, she didn't know how to react and how to feel because she said, this person is being kind to me, but also he's abusing me. And obviously they don't feel that pleasure at that time. Um, I, I think it's a very difficult thing um, for children. I'm not sure why um, people have done it. I've read some research that different people have got different brain um, patterns and depending on whether they have been abused as a child, often it's a repeat um, offender behavior. It's a vicious cycle in some cases. You've got countries um, like Afghanistan and Iran and some Asian countries in Middle East and where um, people have a, you know, a wife and children, but they often have a little boy on the side, um, which, which they molest. And as soon as that boy has some facial hair, they get rid of him. So these things are, have become common and normal. And when you speak to people um, about it, they say, oh, my uncle did that, and my father did that, and they think it's something acceptable. Yeah, also like, um and also, uh, it, it makes you struggle with your identity, with um, with your it was with your sexual life as well. Like, um, and like I, I went through um, and still highly struggle with it. Um, I went through a massive porn addiction uh, a couple of years ago, and lost one of my amazing jobs because of it. Um, and this is while I was in rehab, and um, it. it and I don't blame sexual abuse on everything. Like I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is it it caused this this at an eight year old as an eight year old boy or a nine year old boy or a ten year old boy or a fifteen year old boy or whatever age it was. Um, it causes your sexual um, your sexual sexual whatever drive your sex drive to to snap and it make, it makes you, you know, depending on who it was that did it to you their sexual desires and stuff like that connect to you and then you start feeling you know your your sex drive is opened up and you start wanting to explore different things and you, you look at women in a different way you look at men in a different way um, and pornography feeds that a lot as well because they you know there is, you know, some people will say there is some good pornography, but, um, but we don't know what happens behind the scenes. Like one of my friends is putting up a petition at the moment to close down Pornhub, and I think it's a good thing because um, recently, apparently, they've been um, accused of um, child sex trafficking, and that's something that I'm very passionate about stopping because children are so innocent, and to have to go through something like to have to go through something like that is really, really sad. 
and I just I never ever want to. I, I know it's going to happen, and I know, unfortunately, I just got to accept it. But I never ever want to see kids go through that because it just it. it I know how they feel on a, on, a, on a total different level, and it just. I mean, you feel so lost. You feel so alone. Um, you know, it's just it's just a, it's it's a flip. It's a hard thing, eh? It's, it's just. just like there's all these things I want to say, there's all these things I want to do um, about it, but it's just, it's time for people to make start making a difference, you know what I mean? Instead of just talking about it or sharing it on Facebook, why don't we start doing stuff about it instead of just letting it happen? You know, if, you, if, if anyone at home uh, that's watching this, that if you suspect anything going on, confront it. Who cares if you offend someone? Confront it. At the end of the day, if they weren't doing it, at least you know. But if they are doing it, mate, it's not worth you not offending someone, or you not you not um, breaking your what is it your bloody image that you have from the community or something. It's just it's something that's just so vile and disgusting. It's just it's it's something that. Like you said, the, sometimes the abused become the abuser, and that's something I was scared of as a kid. And even growing up, I always used to get told that. The abuse becomes the abuser. And I struggle with that because I've seen it in so many cases. Um, I also, I spoke a couple of weeks ago, I also thought that I was going to, um, you know, the, the, the male figure I had as well. I always also thought I was going to end up like that. Um, the abuse become the abuser. And I want to break that cycle. And that's what I'm doing in my family is I'm breaking that cycle. Because for generations in my family, we've we've face this, this, this same thing, this sexual abuse, it just follows through the generations. I'm not sure how far or how wide or whatnot, but I know that on both sides of my families it's happened and um, we need to start doing something about it. Um, you know, sitting here and having a chat is great and I'm, I love doing it um, because, you know, people, you guys at home can watch this and, and see that this is something that you need to talk about and need to do. Um, because it's it's something that if you bottle up, it's gonna kill you. It's really gonna kill you. And drug, no, no amount of drugs is gonna help you. No amount of um, whatever you use to, to to save that is gonna help you. And um, to have like a safe place like these fellas next to me and, and Elmi and, and the audience that are watching this, it's really it, it, it brings me a bit of confidence in the fact that I can share my story and um, know that, that it, it can be it can help other people. Um, I mean, I was reading this week. Um, Elmi was telling us as well on the group chat that um, you know, seven-year-old uh, was it a, a guy's going to prison for life or something for for raping a seven-year-old girl or something. I mean, far out, seven years old. Man, I can tell you, if that was my daughter, I would be broken. I'd absolutely be destroyed because that's something that's just. That's just dark, man, eh? Like a seven-year-old girl. I mean, I don't know if any of you guys have kids or anything, but I, I don't either, but like, just a seven-year-old girl, even a little sister, like, remember her at seven years seven years of age or a partner or something, just imagine that, man. It's just, it's just disgusting. It is so scary. And, you know, I, I really, I'm really grateful that he is actually going to jail for, for the remainder of his life because that's something that, you know, he, he has to live with it now. Um, and some people might say that, you know, he doesn't mind, he doesn't care. Well, he's going to have to live with all the boys in jail that are going to, you know, teach him some lessons. Sorry about that. Juma, what, what do you think um, people can do to prevent these type of things happening as a society or as a community? Uh, um, things that we can implement? Uh, a lot of this obviously does happen in secret, but um, I think it's... It's the people that it's, it has happened to that uh, have been terrified. Uh, they cannot speak up, and so if you know the, uh, those people who are victimized and they feel like um, they that they can't speak up, they they should because if the more they keep quiet, the more that's going to keep going on and on and on. Because um, the abuser does does not just do it once. And it's, it's the same person that continues to do the same thing 
over and over again and um, it's it's very scary like you know just sitting down and, and listening to what Jack has to say really it's, it's terrifying you know like I, 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 he's, he's very brave for speaking up and and um, yeah he's got a lot of guts to to speak about this because even me like uh, hearing this it makes me sick like I feel sick from the inside you know like what what goes on on like, uh, in society I'm really speechless like you know I think um, as a community or as a society and starting with each family what they can do for example is you know limiting the intoxicants like alcohol because when people have alcohol um, that you know removes your inhibitions and you lose the analytical and logical part of the brain and you don't really know what you're doing and then that's often cases of incest start from the abuse of alcohol and drugs um, and also the exposure I believe to pornography from a young age mm. makes people desensitized and to many things to many things and if you you know there's a lot of things that are going around which um, you know, f from the media, from the TV shows, from the movies, they, all these things have been normalized and, and people are desensitized. I think another thing um, families can do is, you know, limit sleepovers. If you're sending your child to sleep at their friend's place, well, you don't really know their caretakers very well, you don't know their parents. And even if you do, there's no guarantee mm. because, you know, you might know somebody for 20 years of your life, yeah. but you haven't necessarily lived with them. You haven't traveled with them you don't really know them so I think it's to be a, a bit cautious and to educate the children to educate them to teach them self-defense to give them the confidence to be able to speak up often a lot of them don't report it right away mm. and as Jack mentioned they think there's something wrong with them and they've done something wrong and usually people that um, do cause sexual abuse uh, do do uh, other offenders um, are very manipulative and they can, like you said, she, he's really nice to me but he, uh, he abuses me. It's the exact same, it happens all the time. But I also want to share as well, um, a big part of my recovery with this was forgiving those people. I can easily say today that I've forgiven every single one of them, um, that I've got no hatred towards them. I've got hatred to the act. I've got a buttload of hatred to the act, but um, yeah, I don't hate them people. I, um, you know, I don't know what happened to them as a child. I don't know what what, what they went through. Um, but all I can do is, for me, is to forgive them because if I don't forgive them, that bitterness is just going to coil in me and it's going to destroy me. Um, so that was the biggest part of my my release in this and, and not allowing this to have power over me was actually constantly for a very long time or sometimes I even still have to like tonight I'll probably have to sit down and do it as well because I'm sort of all those feelings that are rising up again but um, having to constantly speak it out saying I forgive these these people I've even had to write it down sometimes um, and you know some people that are watching this probably think man like that's you know it's it's impossible or, or whatnot but it's it's actually not um, you know that old saying, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. Um, I think that's the saying, I don't know, but... Um, everyone, in the, everyone in this world is strong enough to forgive. Yeah, it takes... A, and I'm going to be honest here, and this might sound rude or brutal or arrogant, but it takes a weak person to not forgive and to hold a grudge. No matter what you went through, no matter, no matter what you've been through, everyone can forgive. We've all got the strength to do it, we can do it. Um, I've seen it many a times in many different occasions um, and if, if someone like myself that's been through such a situation um, can forgive, I, I, you know, even, even that lady that had her four kids mowed down the other week, she forgave um, the guy for it um, and that just shows true courage. Whether that was her faith or not, I don't know. but. Even, even the fact she stood up in front of Australia and said, I oh, forgive, is just an amazing thing. So I'm going to really emphasize forgiveness tonight on, on the offenders. Not that they deserve it, but because you deserve it. You deserve to be free from that bitterness and that anger and that resentment. Um, yeah. What do you think, Jack, should be done to these perpetrators that do that? Is there a rehabilitation that they can go to or, or imprisonment or um, um, should we go to the extreme case and, and put death sentences and things? I think, honestly, I think death, death is too easy. I think it's an easy way out. And 
And I don't mean that in a, in a bad way. Um, I just think that, you know, we don't, no one really knows what happens after death, whether we go to heaven, whether we actually, it's just another void or whether we're reincarnated. There's many beliefs behind what happens with death. Um, but I think that, you know, you, uh, you, hear this, um, you hear this saying, if you make, you make your bed, you lay in it sort of thing. Yeah, if these people made these decisions, they need to live with them for the rest of their lives. Whether that's in prison, whether that's in a mental institution, they should, pardon me, they should not be out in the public. But I also don't agree with violence towards these people, to these offenders. And that's coming from a, from a victim, because violence just causes more issues. Um, these people, whether they're in the community or not, I don't... Um, now, I've never had it happen to a child of mine, so I can't speak on behalf of a dad or something because I don't have any kids. But I don't believe that we should um, enact violence for, or, or sexual abuse with violence because that's not, you know, you're just fighting fire with fire. You know, you, you, honestly, you're going to be teaching your kid that, um, yeah, that, that's not really a good lesson to teach a child, I don't think, anyway. Um, I mean, I, I, by all means, there's been many times where I've wanted to hunt these people down and, and, and do many unspeakable things to them, but um, it's not worth it. The best thing to do is forgive. Never forget, but just forgive and try to move on every day the best you can and live your life because these people, you know, some, people some of these people get off on the fact that they, they've ruined your lives. Don't let them have that, don't let them have that, um, that stronghold, that power over you because they won't. If you don't let them win, don't let them win. But I don't think we should go hunting them and, and beating them up and putting them on stakes because um, over, over history it's happened to many different cultures, many different races and religions um, where the people have been violence and it just causes nothing but anger and hatred and terror. Um, I think the best thing we can do is, is, I mean, I don't really know anything else other than prison for life. I think that's the best penalty. I don't care if it's a once-off offence or whatnot. They should be in prison for life and that's how it is. And whatever happens to them in prison is, is whatever happens in prison.